I go uh, to see what's, what's next to talk about it and, and we get you know. Hey, what's going on, Ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing Subjective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. Saul Canelo Alvarez suffered his second pro career loss at the hands of the WBA light heavyweight world champion Dimitri Bivol. Although Canelo's ambitions his search for greatness speak volumes. Although this loss does not affect Canelo Alvarez's legacy, he did lose on wider margins than the judges scored it officially. And many objective observers conclude Canelo versus Bebo was not close. After the mid rounds, Canelo slowed down, became quite predictable, and eventually faded, whilst his opponent Dimitri Bivo was energized throughout the entire fight, completely outboxing Canelo. Dimitri Bivo is in his fighting prime, lives well outside of boxing, and is a stylistic nightmare for the Mexican. And so, in my opinion, a potential Canelo versus Bivo rematch will turn out exactly the same even if the fight takes place at 168. So what is next for Saul Canelo Alvarez? Let us know who you think Canelo should fight next in the comments below. Yeah, look at all he's accomplished. I mean, I've never been a hater. I never take nothing away from him. He's the king right now, man. Yes. And you know, I'm here to stay and I'm here to give the people the best fights they want to see. So let's get it, man. I'm, I'm an action-packed fighter and I guarantee you tune in and watch me fight. You know, I'm going to be your favorite fighter. Yeah, I'm, gonna say this, yeah, I'm not afraid of no one. I'm not afraid of nobody. Spoiler alert, not on this list is two-time WBC super middleweight world champion David Benavides. I already did a Canelo Benavides matchup, which you can check out here. Now, assuming no crazy upsets happen in the near future, here are three possible opponents for Saul Canelo Alvarez. Let's get into it. Number one, Jermall Charlo. But that was good that y'all stayed up to date, um, keep my opponents uh, peeking and making them feel good and making them feel like they're the best in the world because when they step in there with me, they'll realize they're not. I want all the belts. I want to be classified as like one of the best fighters of my era in my division for sure. Jermall Hitman Charlo. Top down goes Bokai. And Charlo scores the third round TKO. A two-weight world champion, his best wins were against undefeated Julian J. Rock Williams. Former light middleweight world champion Austin No Doubt Trout. And two-time world title challenger Sergei Derevyanchenko. The WBC middleweight champion of the world. Jamal Hitman Charlo. Charlo has good power, good speed, good counter punching. You can say Charlo is good in every department, yet doesn't have any qualities that stand out. The main criticism for the Hitman is that although he is undefeated, Jamal Charlo simply hasn't fought the most stellar opposition. potential fight with Jamal Charlo has been talked about for a while. Some people went even as far as to say Canelo has avoided Charlo. I mean, if you just take a look at his last seven fights, Saul Canelo Alvarez fought one relatively unknown fighter, but that was a mandatory challenger. All other opponents were either world titleists or reigning world champions, all happening in three different weight classes. Four of them were world title unification fights, including his three fights leading up to winning the undisputed crown at super middleweight. Two fights were at 175 against, again, reigning world champions, which is absolutely crazy if you consider his seven fight streak started as low as 160 pounds which was a world title unification bout against the close to his prime Danny Jacobs. So to insinuate Canelo has avoided Jamal Charlo who hasn't done much less achieve even a fraction of what Canelo has in the last three years alone is absurd. In the case Charlo would fight Canelo, Charlo would debut at 168 pounds, meaning he'd move up in weight with not much to offer really. That said, Canelo versus Charlo would be an interesting fight and maybe Canelo can get the best out of the hitman. I think 
Jamal Charlo is a good fighter. The question is, is he great? Can Jamal Charlo show fight fans something we haven't seen from him so far? Number two, Gennady Golovkin. Now we all know Gennady Golovkin just turned 40 and the question is, how will this version of Triple G fare against an in his prime Saul Canelo Alvarez? The first two Triple G Canelo fights were fantastic. A draw. Well, 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 after all of that, Golovkin can't believe it. I don't really either. Everybody wants that fight, right? Maybe a little late, maybe no. Everybody still wants that fight, so why not? In the first moment, uh, I think this is crazy. It's crazy. And later, like a couple, couple days ago, just I said, okay, this is business. This is not sport right now. Is it still personal for you with him? Yeah. He talk a lot of shit. He talk a lot of things, but. We want to see whoever you think both Canelo fights won. They sure were significant for this generation and surely forced Canelo to become the complete fighter he is today. Now, of course, at the age of 40, Gennady Golovkin has slowed down. And in his latest fight against Ryota Murata, the opening rounds proved Triple G clearly dealt with ring rust. Again, Triple G is moving into that power hand. I'm surprised to see that as part of the game plan. Murata with another good right hand over the top. It's a good counter right from Murata as he pushes Triple G back. Triple G took a big right hand there as he was throwing a punch. The punch you don't see is the one that hurts you the most. It's and yes, Murata, of course, is not a fighter on the level of Saul Canelo Alvarez. Still packs power, which Golovkin proved to be able to take well, whilst he himself showed he is still dangerous. Once Golovkin found his groove, he started to pound away on Murata as we saw flashes of a vintage Triple G. Here we see that jab right down the middle, sets up the overhand right. I believe this is the one that knocks the mouthpiece. There you see it sending flying through the air. And coming fresh off a win, even at the age of 40, Golovkin may make the Canelo trilogy a fascinating affair. Since there are some needle between the two rivals, since Canelo just looked far from invincible in his fight with Dimitri Bivo, taking his first loss in nearly a decade, what would a second consecutive loss do to Canelo, especially in his division? Or can Saul Canelo Alvarez regain his momentum by beating Golovkin more convincingly, or even be the first in his pro career to stop Triple G this time around? Those are questions to consider, which makes a Canelo Triple G trilogy one to be excited for. Number three, Ilunga Makabu. Just the idea of being a two-time world champion at light heavyweight would have been a historical feat on Canelo's already impressive and historical resume. Although Cinco de Mayo weekend 2022 showed a gap with at least one of the champions at 175, doesn't mean Canelo will lose to all comers nor from super middleweight. <laughs> la siguiente pelea para Canelo y buscar al campeón crucero Macau. The momentum and intrigue for Canelo's debut at Cruiserweight, fighting WBC champion Ilunga Jr. Macabu, has seemed to die out ever since Canelo's trainer Eddie Reynoso called for the Macabu fight. Even though for a while Macabu looked to be the front runner as Canelo's first opponent in 2022. He liked to challenge Cruiserweight television. Welcome. I'm a champion. I also like to fight the best. I accept the fight to fight Canelo and uh, say good luck to Canelo and you are welcome to challenge Junior Macabu. Why not roll the dice again? Junior Macabu is a small cruiserweight, a longer reach than Dimitri Bivo, yes, but not as skilled, not as good a mover as Bivo, and not as good an overall fighter as Dimitri Bivo. His latest fight, which was a rematch against Abisom Chunu, proved Macabu is an aging fighter who struggled to find his rhythm, failing to impress, barely winning the fight. Even if Saul Canelo Alvarez would move up two weight classes, 
from his preferred 168 pound division to challenge the physically bigger fighter he has ever fought in a professional boxing ring. Canelo is fresher, more skilled, and an overall better fighter than Junior Makabu. And I don't mean no disrespect, Junior Makabu is the bigger man, dangerous yet beatable, as his most recent outing proved. A win over Makabu would mean a world title in five different weight classes for Saul Canelo Alvarez, whose legacy consists of the first Mexican undisputed world champion in the four bell era, the most active world champion in 2021 becoming undisputed in 11 months. Now questions to consider, will Canelo ignore the BOL rematch? If so, will Canelo attempt to bounce back by moving up another weight division? A fight against Junior Makabu certainly adds up to Canelo's legacy, who regardless of the results has a reputation of A, fighting the fights boxing fans want to see Canelo in, B, even going above and beyond taking tough opponents outside of his natural weight division. These are just my three suggestions. What are yours? Who would you like to see Saul Canelo Alvarez in with next? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this kind of content and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. It helps out the channel a lot, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. As always, thank you so much for your support in advance and welcome the ringside stories now if you've done that already you're amazing we already know that you are the true undisputed world champion till next time ringsiders this is your host boxing subjective observer with ringside stories thanks for watching and have a legendary day